I'm going to read a little bit out of this book, Animal Speak, by Ted Andrews. I'm outside. I'm going to read the introduction to the book, and it's what he's uh, talking about, about himself, on learning animal speak. Nature has filled my life. I was fortunate in spending most of my childhood among woods, ponds, creeks, and fields. Animals have always come to me in dreams and in waking. They have guided me in life decisions, and they even spoke to me of my father's death. I have seen the wolf in wild eye to eye, and I have encountered moose, bear, porcupines, and otters. I have held hawks, owls, and even a golden eagle upon my arm, and I have been nipped by a fox. I have fed vultures and marveled by the bellying, bellowing of elk on a distant hill. Crows called to me every morning, and ravens guided me once when I, when I was lost. I was held a fragile, I have held a fragile seahorse in my hand and followed a great green morai eel. eel to the depth of 150 feet, and hawks always watched over me when I traveled. And with it all, I am always amazed at the wonder of nature and its multiplicity, and especially at what it is saying to me about my own life at the time of such encounters. I looked for what it is trying to teach me. I know nature speaks to us if we listen. Every animal has a story to tell. Every flower blossoms with reminders to be creative. And every tree whispers with its rustling leaves the secrets of life. As a lifelong student of mysticism, with a formal background in literature and linguistics, I have found within most scriptures and mythologies of the world a vein of lore surrounding the spirit of animals and the belief that the, the divine forces speak to humans through the natural world as part of them. Animals and nature are not the domain of any one society or segment of society. All peoples are touched by them. Today it is not uncommon to hear people speak of trying, quote, quote, to get back in nature, to get in touch with the earth once more. The truth is we have never being out of touch. We are always connected to the earth and it to us. Everything we do repercusses upon it and everything within it re repercusses on us. Unfortunately, most choose to ignore it or are unable to recognize it. The saddest part is that we fail to reverence any aspect of nature and our intimate connection to it. We are failing to reverence intimate aspects of our own self. I am part of the natural world as part of it. I have a responsibility to know as much about the environment in which I am living. The more I understand it, the more I understand myself. I have made a point of trying to understand my environment and all life, human and animal, within it. To some, this may make me an amateur naturalist, but I am simply trying to speak the language of life. If you were to move to a foreign country, 
you would have to learn the language of that country to survive and be productive. The more you understood the intricacies of that language, its dialects and uses, the more effective you would become within your life, the easier it becomes for you to survive and grow. The natural world is part of your environment and your life, and if you truly wish to become productive and creative within your world, you will need to learn some of its languages. And the easiest and most enjoyable to learn is animal speak. There are many myths of a magical time in a place in which there were no boundaries between humans and animals. Humans were at peace with the animals and spoke their language. It reflected, it reflected a time of mingling between divine and, and human. Wild and tame had no meaning. Animals and humans could speak together. Sometimes humans learn in the animal tongue and sometimes animals learn in the human tongue. In our quest for the scientific and rational, we have come to look at nature in its elements as objects separate from us and simply excuse me and simply to be studied. For many this science scientific approach to nature has destroyed the mysticism and spirituality surrounding it. It has burst its bubble of mystery. Nothing could be further from the truth. What science uncovers about nature should amaze us and fill us with even greater wonder at the magnificent expression of life in all its varied forms. It should teach us Oh, I'm sorry. That's, I don't know what's going on. It should teach us how intricately every aspect of nature is woven into our own existence. The animal world has so much to teach us. Oh, my. Somebody's working. I'm sorry at interruption. Wouldn't it be wonderful to learn their secrets? Some are great nurturers and protectors. Some have great fer fertility and others have great gentleness. Some embody strength and courage while others can teach playfulness. The animal world shows us the potentials we can unfold, unfold, unfold. but to learn from them we must first learn to speak with them. Animals have often been attributed with fantastic qualities, and if nothing else, its attribution helps us to appreciate the na natural world more fully. Every animal is a gateway to the phenomenal world of the human spirit. What, must, what most fail to realize, though, is that what they think of animals reflect the way they think of themselves. When we learn to speak with animals, to listen with animals' ears, and to see through animal eyes, we experience the phenomena, the power, and the potential of the human essence, and it is then that the animals are no longer our subordinates. They become our teachers, our friends, and our companions. They show us the true majest majesty of life itself. They restore our forgotten childlike wonder at the world, and they reawaken our lost belief in magic dreams and possibilities. And here's what Chief Dan George said. If you talk to the animals, they will talk to you and you will know each other. If you do not talk to them, you will not know them. 
and what you do not know you will fear. What one fears, one destroys. Sammy was listening. That's my cat, Sammy.